Hey everyone, in this video we'll be learning about the Firebase cache listing and uh, this is Xamarin Forms project where I'll be integrating it and uh, in our future we'll be using it in our .NET MAUI project too and here you can see we can uh, select the stack traces key logs as well as the data and in which actually the line the crash has really occurred So this is Firebase cache listings and we'll be integrating this plugin inside our Xamarin Forms project So here you can see uh, this is plugin.firebase crash listing and uh, we'll be installing plugin.firebase crash listing on our Xamarin Forms Android as well as iOS project so here uh, let's go to our project at first and install this plugin so I'll just go navigate over there and then click on manage NuGet package and uh, select all the solutions with the NuGet package so that's all so we have uh, already added all those plugins inside our shared android and ios project now it's time to write some platform specific code so you can see i have added a line of code that is firebase core app.config uh, method which uh, get all the instances of the uh, firebase so now it's time for adding google surface info dot p list to our ios solution so where we'll be selecting bundle resource as a build action so in order to do that at first we are going to log in via uh, Google account that is to our Firebase. So let's go to the Firebase console and then log in uh, to the Firebase via a new account. So let's go to the uh, getting started section where uh, I'll be creating a brand new project. So here you can see we have a section called as create a new project. And we'll be giving our project name as windmills. So it might be different on your case. So add your project name and uh, click on continue so here i'll be clicking on continue and then i'll accept the agreement and then create the project all right so we have uh, finally created the project and it is finishing the setup so let's wait for some time till it finishes and we'll just click on continue after that so here at first we'll be either selecting ios as well as the android project if you want to test the android project then you can skip this video and then get to the android section at first we'll register our uh, the bundle identifier for the ios project in order to do that i'll just go to the bundle identifier and give a different name for our project solution so that uh, uh, it would be same as like our android project too so here the bundle identifier for the android and ios will be same so here uh, i'll just give uh, my application a nickname as ios app you can just give your project name to over here now we are going to download the info.plist json file so as soon as i download it i'll just uh, reveal it in my finder as well as the file explorer so this is my uh, json file which i need to grab it and then uh, drop it inside my ios project so like this so you can give any name as you like but uh, i just want to be very specific so this was my previously uh, added file so i'll just delete that and then i'll just rename it to my uh, uh, file name as uh, google service info dot p list so here i'll just select the build action to our bundle resources that was mentioned in our documentation too now uh, we have successfully uh, configured our ios project so we don't have anything uh, that is like bundle resources we have already selected now uh, we have already added that line of code inside our app delegate that is inside this section so we are fine right now and our ios project is successfully uh, configured now it's time for adding our android project support so here you can see the android project server support also needs uh, the google service json file inside our android project so let's go to the uh, console over here and then i'll just uh, go there and click on next click on next and click on next and then continue to the console so we have already added our ios project it's time for adding our android project so here We'll just give the same bundle name as like what we have given for the ios 2 at android manifest here i'll just give the package name as com.jam app that uh, the same uh, bundle identifier name that we have given for ios 2 and then i'll just register the app and then we'll be downloading the google service.json file and uh, adding it inside our android project as like this i'll just drag and drop inside my android project and then uh, i'll just copy that to the android project uh, directory so click on ok so here we have already uh, added previously our google service.json file so i'll just rename it and then add it inside my android project so yeah we have done 
uh, as expected now let us uh, select our build action to google service json let's check the documentation back again where uh, we'll see that we have to select that uh, target frame of two more than 10 and then here uh, we have to add one uh, string resources so here inside our resources folder of our android project here you can see i have added one file name as string.xml so we'll just create a new file and select our uh, xml um, selection of the file and then we'll just add one string.xml file and add this uh, line of code so you can get all this line of code from my uh, project that i will be adding it inside my uh, video's description then uh, we are all done with the file uh, addition now it's time to uh, use the whole cross-platform class analytics so here you can see we can add the custom logs as well as custom keys too in order to add uh, on handle exception we need to copy that line of code and then paste it inside our uh, app.xaml.cs so let's go there inside our app.xaml.cs where we'll be pasting that uh, code so let's go to app.xaml.cs here i have pasted the code and don't forget to add that uh, nuget plugin usage over here inside the namespace section so that's all that we have done now let's go to our main page.xaml i have added two buttons which is a uh, common bind it with the uh, view model so you can just add your dot uh, cs integration to and uh, uh, without using mbbm approach so just uh, uh, mbbm approach to uh, send uh, the button click to our view model so here you can see i have binded my main page with the main page view model so i'll be calling this uh, two button click event handlers on our uh, view model dot cs you can see uh, that is our main page view model which is uh, going to be called uh, to our main page.xaml using this binding approach so that whenever these buttons are clicked so that uh, we are going to create seven uh, even handlers for our button click so here you can see that there uh, i'll just uh, transport that code to at top that is whenever i click on perform crash then it will throw the crash whereas uh, whenever i click on exception occurred button then uh, we will get uh, all the records being saved towards our uh, firebase crash logic uh, th and now you can see here as soon as this perform crash button is clicked then we are going to set some custom keys logs as well as set user id so you can use any type of user id from where uh, the user has created the crash from and logs as well as set custom keys are also uh, the keys where we can save the records so now uh, now let's uh, start with our iOS project. You can start with the Android project too uh, in order to uh, verify that the Crashlytics is really working. So here, uh, let's build the project. Miss any of the step that I will be doing from here in order to uh, see any type of Crashlytics. So here you can see I have to go click on Crash at first so that it crashes our application so you can see the exception has occurred and then uh, we'll just uh, uh, get this exception towards our firebase uh, console so let's go to the firebase console here we'll just go to the firebase console and click on the firebase icon where we'll just again select the application now it's time for going to the analytics no it's a release and monitor section where we'll select the uh, crash listics uh, section over here here we'll just select our ios project you can just select the android project too so when we hit the crash for the first time then it started rotating and now if we again hit the uh, run button and then uh, again crash the application then it will show us the data inside the firebase uh, console so again we need to hit the crash and then now the application got crashed now you can clearly see after a, 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 like a minute then uh, you it will automatically get displayed and uh, this requires two time of crashes so that's why you need to hit that two time of crashes and it will just report that on our ios project in which view model in which line the crash has occurred so that is really great right so the same thing happens for the android too so let's go and run the android project and crash the application so this is the code that is really used in order to uh, crash the application now i'll just set the android project let's go to back section where we'll just see the android project so there is nothing that is rotated uh, and now we need to hit crash for two times so that uh, we'll just get the uh, result so let's go and run the application so this is just building the application in the release mode 
great application is started so let's wait for some time till we see the ui so here we need to click on crash so that the application gets crashed and returns to the home page so we don't know about the crash that has happened so you can see this is getting rotated back again and uh, now it is going to detect any type of uh, crash that happens on the android project so again we'll uh, uh, crash the application again running the application from here then again we'll uh, hit this crash button then uh, it is going to record uh, that result and uh, you can see installation got successful go to the console then you will just see that the crash has happened we can connect our uh, crash listic with the google play console too and it will tell that in which view model the crash has occurred and it has really helps the developer to understand in which uh, common parameter the crash has happened and everything regarding the bug so that's all for this tutorial now thank you thank for watching keep in touch for next tutorials